Uh, hello, good morning. Uh, welcome again to Introduction to Philosophy. Uh, so for this week, <coughs> I'm going to talk to you about um, personal identity, which is our topic for this week. So um, personal identity is concerned with the question of, um, uh, they are really concerned with two personal questions, uh, two related questions. Uh, the first question is, uh, what is the self? Uh, is there such a thing as the self? Um, and the second question is, um, how do we base uh, our personal identity on, uh, on this account of the self? So it's important to get uh, clear about what the self is. Um, you know, in, uh, we have many, and many philosophers are very concerned with this problem because um, in an everyday context, you know, we use the word self all the time. We use that concept all the time and we take that for granted. For example, I would say, um, you know, I'm not being myself today. Uh, he wasn't being himself today. Uh, so when we say things like that, we assume that there is a concept of a self. Um, we assume that we know what it means for, uh, for there to be a self that is continuous over time. Um, we assume what it means for somebody to be the same self, the same person, and not, become, and not having become a different person. So, um, so, um, so what philosophers are concerned with is to get a precise notion about what this self consists in, and to um, and the related question would be uh, what is what kind of uh, account of personal identity that we can generate from this account of the self. So, um, to begin with, let, let us let me start by recapping briefly what we did last week. Um, so you might remember that I ended the previous video, last week's video, with uh, talking about Descartes. You might remember that um, Descartes ended the second meditation with his conclusion uh, that he is a thinking being. Um, he ended with the um, famous proclamation, I think, therefore I am. So, um, so what does that mean? I mean, what am I? So for Descartes, the question, the answer to this question of what am I is that I am a mind. I am a mind and a thinking substance. And um, for Descartes, being a mind and being a thinking substance or being a soul is what, uh, is what makes me um, uh, most essentially me. Uh, I cannot be myself without being a mind or, or, without, or without being a thinking substance. Um, uh, so this is where we left off with, De with Descartes. So today we are going to look at the views of this um, British English philosopher by the name of John Locke. Now, um, Locke actually agrees with Descartes that we are mainly uh, we are essentially thinking substances. Um, however, Locke thinks that um, uh, Descartes' um, account doesn't explain enough about our everyday notions of personal identity, because. Um, Although we, you know, although I can think of myself as being the same person over time, um, there, there is also um, we also cannot deny that I do change as a person over time. Um, to give you an analogy, you know, a tree may remain the same tree over time, but as time passes, you know, the, the maybe the trunk becomes thicker, it gets new layers of bark, and so on and so forth. Um, so the tree can remain the same tree uh, while you know while changing over time. Um, so, in the same way, with, with uh, human beings, with persons, we want to find an account, we want to have an account that can explain how uh, one can remain um, the same person over time whilst, while in some sense uh, also changing. Um, so what, and this is what Locke is trying to do. So Locke basically begins by th his account of personal identity by saying that personal identity is self-consciousness. Um, to be a person is to have a is to have a consciousness that is directed towards um, uh, towards things that I have gone through as a self. Um, but what is self consciousness? Well, um, Locke goes on to uh, unpack or explain self consciousness as consisting is in the continuity of memory. So to be a person is to have a you know is to have a consciousness that is directed towards. Uh, uh, to, towards the experiences of uh, of a self of myself, and to and what this means is to have um, a consciousness that consists in a, a, a continuous set of memories uh, that is continuous from uh, you know more or less from the time when I was a child all the way till now and uh, stretching into the future. So um, uh, so what what Locke would say is that you are the same person. Uh, you are the same person over time if your memories are, you know, continuous over time. 
Okay. Um, so let me let me give you an example to illustrate uh, what I'm saying. So let me let me use myself as an example. So um, uh, okay. So this is me, Ang, uh, my last name. Uh, this is me in 2014. Uh, you know, right now I have a whole bunch of memories about what I did yesterday. Uh, I have a whole bunch of memories about what I did today. Um, I also have memories stretching back into the past. Um, I can remember a whole, bunch, a whole bunch of things that I did over the last 10 years. Uh, so I can remember some, a whole bunch of things that I did in 2004. However, um, I might not remember everything that I did in 2004. So for example, um, today is November 4th. Um, I, might, I probably won't remember, I don't remember what I had for breakfast on November 4th of 2004. Um, so I remember some things in 2004, but, but not everything. Um, but a lot of things that this is not a problem because uh, um, I remember some, it's good enough that I remember some of the things that I did in 2004 because that way my, the memories um, that consist of the self of me in 2004 would be continuous more uh, with the memories that co consist of the self that I am right now. And then um, I, I might not remember many of the things that I did 20 years ago in 1994, um, but that doesn't really matter. Because um, if I remember at least um, the whole bunch of things that I did in 2004, um, the self, myself in 2004, would remember a whole bunch of things that I did in 1994. So you can see that um, as a result of this, there is one continuous chain of memories stretching from 1994 uh, all the way to you know today, 2014. And it is this continuous chain of memory uh, memories that make me uh, that make it possible for for me to say that you know this uh, these three persons Ang in 1994, 2004, and 2014 are one single continuous uh, consciousness. In other words, uh, these three persons are actually one single identical person, and that constitutes my identity. Okay. Um, so the you know the uh, the idea uh, the the main view the main idea that Locke is trying to put forward, which is that uh, self consciousness or self identity consists in uh, continuity of memory, is actually you know pretty straightforward. Um, but there are actually a few problems about this view that uh, we need to you know consider. Well, okay, there are actually three main problems that uh, that come to mind right now. Um, the first problem is this. Um, we all know that you know people often suffer severe memory loss due to illness. So for example, um, people who get older and who suffer from dementia or from Alzheimer's uh, may you know lose most or even all their memories. So are we willing to say that um, uh, that you know that the person right now who is suffering from dementia who no longer remembers anything uh, that happened in the recent past or in the more uh, more distant past is now no, no longer the same person as you know as he was um, in the past. Well, I don't know. That, that is a different. This is a difficult question uh, because some people you know would go some some people's common sense of uh, intuition would would, uh, would would say that well of course they are the same person. I mean same uh, there is a, he has the same body. He is still conscious even if he doesn't remember very much. But some people would say hmm. There is a very in important sense in which he has ceased to be the same person. So, um, so Locke, um, Locke's account gives uh, gives rise to this problem, and it is not entirely clear which way the problem you know should be solved. Um, the other problem is the problem of intoxication. So sometimes you know when people get drunk, um, they they say you know they, they they do things that they later don't remember when they become when they become sober. Um, so I'm sure you know many many such as examples. So the thing is this: um, if you don't remember what ha what you did when you were drunk and blacked out, um, uh, does that mean that the the self that you were when you were drunk and blacked out is not the same self as you know as your sober self? Well, that seems to go against uh, our common sense view of what makes a person a person, because we would say that. You know, even a person who is intoxicated and blackout, we still hold him accountable for, uh, you know, for the actions that he does while he's, uh, while he's uh, intoxicated and blackout. Which I mean, you know, if you the the law, for example, would uh, actually, 
hold somebody accountable uh, for any property damage or any damage to persons that are done while that person is intoxicated and you know blacked out and so in so far as the law reflects our common sense notions of personhood and responsibility I think um, I, I think the this would present a problem for Locke's account because Locke's account fails to explain to us uh, why it is that you know a person who's drunk uh, can still you know remain the same person even though we don't um, we may not remember uh, what we did when we are drunk and blacked out. Um, okay, so that's another problem, and the third problem is this: um, there are you know there are all kinds of. Uh, Problems. People people sometimes experience a severe change of personality um, without a change of memories. Um, this usually happens when people have gone through a you know a, a very traumatic incident or some kind of accident. So, for example, uh, somebody may uh, have may, may meet with an accident and suffer some kind of damage to the brain. Maybe he suffers the, the damage only to a very specific part of the brain um, and as a result of this damage, um, he loses the ability to empathize with other people. He becomes very violent and hot-tempered uh, and you know, prone to hurting other people. But, but he still has all the memories of, his, you know, of the past intact. He still remembers everything that he did in the recent past as well as the uh, distant past. So, um, are we to say that he is still the same person even though he has undergone a totally drastic change of personality? Well, I think many people, uh, I mean many, uh, many people who hold a common sense view would say that, well, he is the same person. I mean, no, sorry. Uh, they would say that he's not, he's no longer the same person because I don't recognize him anymore. Uh, he is like, you know, it's like he's become a different person. And I think people don't just say this, uh, you know, metaphorically. I think they sort of mean it literally. Um, so what that shows is that our common sense view um, indicates that we actually don't think that memory is the only thing that makes somebody who he is. We believe that in addition to memory, um, uh, somebody's personality traits also are a very important component of making up his personal identity. Uh, so that if his personal identity change, I mean, so not, so that if his personality trait changes, even if all his memories are intact, we are still inclined to say that he may have become a different person. Um, but the problem is that Locke, I, Locke would say that you know he is still the same person because all his memories are intact. So so the so this also presents a problem for Locke. He doesn't seem his account doesn't seem to be able to explain. Uh, what happens to you know um, what happens with those people who have undergone a severe change of temperament and personality while still having their memories intact? So anyway, um, so these are all these problems with Locke's views that we uh, should be aware of as we think about personal identity. Um, so uh, be sh uh, try to read, uh, be sure to read those few pages in the textbook. Um, you can find them in the syllabus uh, which deal with Locke's uh, views and. Um, I hope you enjoy thinking about personal identity. Thank you.